Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Christos Anesti Eknekron Thanato Thanaton Patisas Ketis Entis Mnimasi Zoin In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, the peace of the whole world, the good estate of the holy churches of God and the union of all men, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this holy house and for those who with faith, reverence, and the fear of God enter therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Metropolitan Joseph, for his grace, our Bishop Basil, the Honorable Presbytery, the Diaconate in Christ, all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For Metropolitan Paul and the Archbishop Johanna, for their speedy release and safe return, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President, all civil authorities, and our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this city and every city and countryside and for the faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For healthful seasons, abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For travelers by sea, by land, and by air, the sick, the suffering, for the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life Unto Christ our God. Glory, o Lord. For a 
unto thee are do all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Shout with joy to God all the earth, sing to his name, give glory to his praises. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, Savior, say to God how awesome are thy works, let all the Worship the unseen to thee. Through the, through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Let it sing a song to thy name, O Most High. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. For thine is the might and thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Thou hast given us may grace God this have time. mercy Lord, upon us and bless us, and may he cause his face to shine upon us, and have mercy upon us. Save us, O Son of God, who art risen from the dead, who sing to thee, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy salvation among all nations. Let the peoples give thanks to thee, O God. Let all the peoples give thanks to thee. Save us, O Son of God, who art risen from the dead, who sees
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. For thou art a good God and lovest mankind, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Let, us let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered, and let them that hate him flee from before his face. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death. Death and on those in the tombs bestowing life. So let sinners perish at the presence of God, and let the righteous be glad. Christ is risen <clears throat> from the dead, trampling down death by death. Rejoice and be glad therein. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and on those in the tombs bestowing life. Sophia. Seraphim with thrice holy the Lord, God of nothingness has brought all things into being, and has created to thine image and likeness, and the to him that asks his and understanding, who despises the but the who has about thy humble and to stand before the glory of
Placed in this the royals the are meet the for the dead, the but the Christ hath proved to be a stranger to corruption. But cry out, the Lord is risen, granting to the world the great mercy. From every defilement of flesh or spirit, and grant us to stand its blossom in the courts of the Lord. Grant also, a God, as a faithful olive tree, a holy martyr's soul, be young. In thy contest, thou didst offer <coughs> to Christ the sweet fruit of thy womb. Faith, hope, and love with them intercede for our souls. Though thou didst descend into the grave, O immortal one, yet didst thou Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
Let us the Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord has chastened me severely. Wisdom. The reading is from the Acts of the Saintly and Pure Apostles. Let us Brethren, in those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the body of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may point, appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, and Pro the proselyte from Antioch. <clears throat> These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands upon them. And the word of, the go of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Peace be to thee that readeth. And to thy spirit. Alleluia. 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 May the Lord hear thee in the day of affliction. Stand upright, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to thy spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee. <clears throat> let us attend. At that time, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether Jesus was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph, and he bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock, and he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back 
It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read today a passage of Scripture from the Gospel of St. Mark that deals with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But before the passage that deals with the resurrection, we heard something else. We heard of Joseph of Arimathea, who was a member of the Council of the Jews who would come and ask Pilate for the body of Jesus. And Pilate was astonished that there was a body to be had. He was amazed that this Jesus was already dead. And the reason for that is because crucifixion was a particularly nasty form of execution that typically took a long time. It took a long time, sometimes days, for people to die on the cross. The Romans liked it that way because it was painful and gruesome and set an example for anyone who would dare raise their voice, raise their head, raise their hand against Rome. This was what would happen to you. You would die on a cross, and it was a horrible death. It was the way that they enforced the Pax Romana, the peace that Rome would bring to the world. It was not the peace that our Lord spoke about when he said, peace I give to you. Not at all. It was the peace that was imposed by force. You will be peaceful or else, or else the cross, you see. But before that, there's an important passage. And it says that Joseph of Arimathea took courage. He took courage. And he went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Why does St. Mark go to such effort to tell us that Joseph of Arimathea had to exercise courage to go to Pilate and ask for the body of Jesus? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, he had to go to the Roman governor and stand before him and ask him for something. And that's no small thing, especially if you were a Jew. The Jews were not highly respected by the Romans. The Jews were a special case. All the different nations that the Romans had conquered, the Romans had brought their gods and imposed it upon them and allowed them to worship theirs as well. But the Jews said, we can't do that. 
We can't do that. We'll be loyal to Rome, but we must only worship our God. The Jews were a thorn in the side of the Romans. And so he didn't look forward, I'm sure, to going and standing in front of this powerful Gentile, this military leader, and asking him, essentially, for a favor. It took nerve. It took courage. And beyond that, we are told that Joseph was a respected member of the council, the Sanhedrin, the leadership of the Jews. They had just sent Jesus to the cross. They had just paid false witnesses to come forward and testify against him. They had just encouraged the crowd to choose Barabbas instead of Jesus, who had healed their sick, who had made the blind to see, who had fed thousands in the wilderness more than once, who had raised the dead more than once, who just some short time ago had raised Lazarus from the dead in front of all of them. They had betrayed him and sent him to his death at the hand of the Gentiles. And now, a member of the council was to go against the grain, against everything they believed in, against all that they were working toward, and give this man, this Jesus, this Yeshua, this one from Nazareth, give him a burial? But not only that, but a dignified burial, at least as dignified as it could be being done with such haste. But against the grain he went. He took courage, and he did that which love demanded. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus and received it. And he and Nicodemus and the faithful few of the women who were there following, who had witnessed the crucifixion, took the body down from the tree, wrapped it in fine linen as was the custom of the Jews, and brought aloe with spices. They didn't embalm. There's a translation out there that sometimes we use in our parishes that talks about how they embalmed Jesus. Nonsense. They did not. And it is not what it says. They anointed him with spices. They would smear this wrapping cloth with the aloe mixed with the spices, and they would wrap the body in this wet, uh, smeary, goopy cloth and then anoint the body further with aloe and spices so that it was wrapped and smelled beautiful. It was the last gift you gave to the one you loved because love demanded it. And they did this very quickly, taking courage, brought about a hundred pounds worth of aloe and spices and did their best to wrap Jesus, but they had to hurry. They didn't get it all finished because the Sabbath was about to begin. And the Sabbath, as we know, begins at sunset. So they hastily did what they could, put him into the tomb, rolled the stone over it, and determined that they would come back after the Sabbath and finish the job. Come back, come back to the tomb, roll the stone away again, go in where the dead man had been lying and finish the job, it's kind of a gross idea. But it's what love demanded. And that's what they did. And that's how they learned of the resurrection of our Lord. But it is the courage of Joseph of Arimathea that I want to focus on today. And not just of Joseph. The courage of Nicodemus, who offered him his tomb, that he had had prepared for him. He had had it prepared long in advance. No one had ever laid in it before. It was brand new. And it was Nicodemus, if you realize, who had come to Jesus by night. By night. Because he didn't want to bear the shame of the leaders of the Jews. So he came to Jesus by night. And by night, he became his disciple. Secretly for fear of the Jewish leadership. But now he took courage and assisted in the burial of Jesus. It takes courage, brothers.
brothers and sisters, to be a Christian. It takes courage to stand against the spirit of the age in which we live, which is wicked. It takes courage to say homosexuality is a sin worthy of repentance, despite what our age tells us. It takes courage to say abortion is a sin worthy of repentance and a great harm done not only to the child but to the woman involved and to everyone who touches it. But that goes against the spirit of our age. It takes courage to say that being a Christian is not about what you get, but about what you are able to give. That we don't come to church like consumers looking for something we can take away, but rather we come as worshipers wondering how much can we give? How much of ourselves can we offer to Christ on the altar. It takes courage. It takes courage to prioritize God above all the other demands in this world. Financial, emotional, familial, no matter what. Professional. It takes courage. People will laugh at you and point their fingers. People will call you closed-minded. People will call you stupid and superstitious, and all sorts of other things that they can invent. It takes courage to stand with Christ. It takes courage to stand with Joseph of Arimathea, with Nicodemus, with the holy apostles, with the myrrh-bearing women. It takes courage to repent. Because when we come in repentance, we come bearing our fair share of shame of embarrassment, of humiliation. And we dare to come and voice our sins, give them names, drag them into the sunlight. But the courage is not blind. You know, courage is not blind in the Christian sense. Because when Christians do courageous things, it's not because they're drunk, you know, with liquid courage, as some would say. It's not because they're foolish and have sort of a fool's courage. It's courage that is based in something. And what is our courage based in? It is based in the love that God has for us and the fact that he has risen from the dead. He has gone to the cross. He has voluntarily given up his life. And then, having conquered Hades, he picked it up again and got up from the dead and broke the bonds of death for us. And now he bids us come to him in repentance. Come unto me, ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will take that heavy load of sin and shame and guilt and all that it is that you have that you dare not even mention or admit to yourselves, and I will take it away, and I will give you life and love and joy in its place. Our courage is rooted in the person of Jesus Christ, that he loves us. And our courage, what we do courageously, is just doing what love demands. Love demands that we love Christ in return. How can I help but love him? It was St. Paul who said, when I was still a sinner, he loved me and died for me. And that's true of all of us. And so today, as we commemorate the holy myrrh bearers, who out of love took courage and went to the tomb early in the morning, not even knowing how they were going to roll away the stone, the stone from the tomb. As today we take courage and remember Nicodemus, who gave his own grave for the Lord Jesus Christ, not worrying this time what the leaders of the Jews would think. As we today remember Joseph of Arimathea, who took courage and went against the wishes of the Sanhedrin, went against protocol 
went to the Gentile military leader and asked him for a favor. Brothers and sisters, let us remember that our courage is rooted in God's goodness, his love for us, and that he has risen from the dead. And let us, to be courageous, courageous enough to lovingly, gently, but truthfully speak to our generation about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us truthfully and courageously repent of our sins and leave them in the dust, knowing that God forgives. Let us take courage and dare to love the one who has loved us first, and in doing so, draw closer to him. For in doing that, we find life, we find joy, and we find peace. To the God who has risen from the dead, having sacrificed himself for us, and who bids us come to him, be all glory, honor, and worship, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom, that guarded always by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. No one who is born with the desires and pleasures of the flesh is worthy to approach or to draw nigh to serve thee, O King of glory. For to serve thee is a great and a fearful thing, even to the heavenly powers. Nevertheless, through thine unspeakable and boundless love toward mankind, thou didst become man, yet without change or alteration, and as master of all, it's take the name of our high priest and deliver unto us the ministry of this liturgic and bloodless sacrifice. For thou alone, O Lord, our God, willest over those in heaven and on earth who are born on the throne of the cherubim, who are Lord of the seraphim and King of Israel, who alone art holy and restest in the holy place. Wherefore I implore thee, who alone are good and are ready to listen. Look down upon me, the sinner, and thine unprofitable servant, and cleanse my soul and my heart from an evil conscience, and by the power of thy Holy Spirit, Enable me, who am endued with the grace of the priesthood, to stand before this thy holy table and perform the sacred mystery of thy holy and immaculate body and precious blood. For I draw near unto thee, and bowing my neck, I pray thee. Turn up thy face from me, neither cast me out from among thy servants, but vouchsafe that these gifts may be offered unto thee by me, thy sinful and unworthy servant. For thou thyself art he that offereth and is offered, that accepteth and is distributed, O Christ our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory together with thine unoriginate Father, Thine all holy good and life giving spirit now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us mystically represent the cherubim and sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Now lay aside all worldly cares that we may receive the King of all the come and visibly upon by the angelic host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us mystically represent the cherubim and sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Now lay aside all worldly cares that we may receive the King of all the and visibly upon by the angelic host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us who mystically represent the cherubim and sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Now lay aside all worldly cares that we may receive the King of all the cometh and visibly upon by the angelic host. Alleluia. Yes. 
Forgive, O oh God, those who hate us and those who love us. Lift up your hands to the heavens and bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord open up with the voice of the trumpet. The sound of the archangel happy. All of you and all Orthodox Christians. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Metropolitan Joseph and his grace, our Bishop Basil, and all our brotherhood in Christ, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. <clears throat> the President of these United States and all civil authorities and our armed forces everywhere, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. The Orthodox servants of God, that they may have mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, pardon, and forgiveness of their sins. Virginia, Sarah, Basil, John, David, Elias, Isaac, Dimitrios, Arsenios, Tatiana, and Lewin, David, Nicholas, Laura, Margaret. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now, and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. The Orthodox servants of God departed this life in the hope of resurrection unto life eternal. The Archpriest James, the Churia Anne, and Irene, Thomas, John, Augusta, Dora, Walker. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The just of me, taken on thy body from the tree, wrapped it in fine linen, anointed that in the spices, and sorrow, and placed it in the Then shall they offer thee bullocks upon thy altar. Then shall they offer thee bullocks upon thy altar. Then shall they offer thee bullocks upon thy altar. 
Let us complete our prayer unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts now set forth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who with faith, reverence, and the fear of God enter therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and forgiveness of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. All things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord, this, o Lord that we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance. Let us ask of the Lord, this, o Lord a Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the fearful judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. O Lord God Almighty, who will Lord fully and must accept a sacrifice of praise from those who come upon thee with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and lead us to thy holy altar and enable us to offer the gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and ignorance of the people, and make us worthy to find grace in thy sight, that our sacrifice may be acceptable unto thee, and that the good spirit of thy grace may rest upon us and upon these gifts here spread forth and upon all thy people. Through the compassions of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages, of ages. Amen. Peace be to all. And to thy spirit. Let us love one another that with one accord we may confess. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my firm foundation, my refuge. The doors, the doors in wisdom, <coughs> let us attend. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth and, of and of all things, things visible, visible and indivisible, and, invisible, and, and in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the Son of God, God the, only the only begotten, begotten, begotten of the Father before, before all worlds, light of light, light very God, God of very God, begotten, begotten not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from the heavens and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into the heavens 
and sitteth at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand aright, let us stand with fear, let us attend, that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with the Holy Spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is right to worship. It is meet and right to humbly to bless thee, to praise thee, to give thanks unto thee, and to worship thee in the place of thy God. For thou art God ineffable, inconceivable, invisible. seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring aloft, borne on their wings, singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sin. Supper, he took the cup saying, Drink of this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Have in remembrance therefore the saving the grave, the third day, the resurrection, the ascension of the heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second, and the glorious coming. 
Thine own, of thine own, we offer unto thee in behalf of all and for all. We praise thee. We bless thee. We give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Especially our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. Among the first, be mindful, O Lord, of our Metropolitan Joseph and his grace, our Bishop Basil, whom do thou grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly dividing the word of thy truth. And of be mindful, O Lord, of those who travel by sea, by land, by air, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and their salvation. Be mindful, O Lord, of those who bear fruit in the good works in thy holy churches, and who remember the poor, and upon us all send forth thy mercies. And grant us with one mouth and one heart to glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. And the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. And with thy spirit. 
Having commemorated all the saints again and again, in peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts which have been spread forth and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> That our God, who loveth mankind, receiving them upon his holy, most heavenly, and ideal altar, as a savour of spiritual sweetness, will send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Asking for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Thou safest to partake of thy heavenly dread and the mysteries of the sacred and spiritual table with a pure conscience and with the forgiveness of sins, under the pardon of transgressions, and with the communion of the Holy Spirit, unto the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, unto boldness toward thee, not unto judgment, nor unto condemnation. And vouchsafe, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be to all. Thyself distribute these gifts here, spread forth unto all of us for good, according to the individual need of each. Voyage with those who sail by sea, journey with those who travel by land and air. Heal the sick with thou who art the physician of our souls and bodies. Through the grace and compassions and love toward mankind of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy good and life giving spirit, now and ever. <coughs> And unto ages of ages. Hear us, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Be gracious, Lord Jesus. Let us attend holy things are for the holy. One is the sanctifies those who shall partake there. And I confess that thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who didst come into this world to save sinners, of whom I am first. And I believe that this is truly thine own immaculate body, and that this is truly thine own precious blood. Wherefore I pray thee, have mercy on me, 
and pardon my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and of deed, of knowledge and of ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thine immaculate mysteries, and to forgiveness of my sins, and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mysteries to thine enemies, neither will I give thee a kiss as to Judas, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom, and not to judgment, nor to condemnation. And I partaking of thy only mysteries, O Lord, and to the healing of soul and body. Amen. <coughs>
With the fear of God, with the love, and with faith, draw ye near. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and hath revealed himself unto us. Mary, the family of God, receives the body and the blood. God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and on those in the tombs bestowing. Panto te ninkea i keis tu se onos to ne Establish us in thy sanctification, that all the day we may meditate upon thy righteousness. Stand upright, having partaken of the divine, holy, immaculate, immortal, heavenly life, giving and dread mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. 
asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. We give thanks unto thee, O Master, who lovest mankind, benefactor of our souls, that thou hast vouchsafed this day to feed us with thy heavenly and immortal mysteries. Make straight our path, establish us all in thy fear. Guide our life, make firm our steps through the prayers and intercessions of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all thy saints. For thou art our sanctification and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O Lord, who blessest those who bless thee and sanctify us, those who put their trust in thee. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Preserve the fullness of thy church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house. Glorify them in recompense by thy divine power, and forsake us not who hope on thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to the priests, to the civil authorities, to the armed forces, and to all thy people. For all good giving and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee we ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Christ our God, who art Blessed so be the, the name of the, the Lord. Let us fulfill the dispensation of the Father. And fill our hearts with joy and gladness, always now and ever and unto ages Blessed of ages. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. The blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love for mankind always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God and our hope. Glory to thee. again from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life, Christ our true God, through the intercessions of his all-immaculate and all-blameless Holy Mother, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, at the supplications of the honorable glorious prophet forerunner and Baptist John, of the holy glorious and all-laudable apostles, of our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose divine liturgy we have celebrated this day, of the holy, glorious, and right victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, of the holy martyr Sophia, protectress of our holy community, together with her three holy martyr children, faith, hope, and love, the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, the Saint Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, and the holy myrrh-bearing women whom we today commemorate and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tomb. He's storing life. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Remember that we must take courage in this world in which we live against so many things, including the present situation in which we find ourselves. Take courage because of the resurrection. May the Holy Trinity keep you all. God bless you.